There he is, Ben. We are now recording. You stream on your 17-inch uh, MacBook Pro non-unit body. Yep. All right. Core 2 Duo Intel Piece processor. Piece of crap. I know, steaming. Ugh. Anyway. <coughs> so, whatever. I shall start things off. Get your timer running. Yep. Coming up on Roundabout 1, Surly Subaru Driver Does the Unthinkable. Learn what absurd thing an intoxicated Pennsylvania mad did... Let me try that again. Three, two, one. Coming up on Roundabout 1, Surly Subaru Driver Does the Unthinkable. Learn what absurd thing an intoxicated Pennsylvania man did while towing his boat, and prepare yourself for another installment of our popular Verses segment. This will be a good one, I promise. So stick around for all these fun stories and a whole lot more, well, fun, only on Roundabout. Roundabout is sponsored by Advance Auto Parts. Visit our website, roundaboutshow.com, to get up to $30 off your next purchase. From the Wheel Spin Studios in Annapolis, Maryland, I'm Christian Conover. From the Roundabout Conference Room in Livonia, Michigan, I'm Jason White, author of Old School Viscom. Up the street from the Glass House in Dearborn, Michigan, I'm Eric Tritko from rumblestrip.net. In the executive suite of the Roundabout Towers, also in Livonia, Michigan, I'm your host, Craig Cole. And in the sixth level of the basement, I'm producer Ben Fenders. It's this is Roundabout. Hello and welcome to Roundabout, episode number 96. It's our weekly chat covering car culture, vehicle reviews, and some of the auto news you may have missed. And that would be thunder, <laughs> which is an ominous sign before recording the show. Um, hopefully we don't lose power. But appropriate know. for the Roundabout Towers. Yes, yes. I felt. Yes, it looks good. Mm-hmm. Towers is a little, mm, 10th year anniversary, mm, Towers. Anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That's really? Craig, that's Craig that's Cole Care Roundabout, P.O. Box. <laughs> 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 Didn't we have a BBC thing planned? And already I know, you're screwing I the program, Craig. Yes. Let's get back to the program. All right. Well, the program is at hand right now. <laughs> program. So we got Jason White back. Great guy, artiste extraordinaire. Oh, please. We've got. <laughs> are you flattered or disgusted? I can't tell. <laughs> of course, Mr. Tritko joining us from, as he said, Dearborn. I don't know how yep. to. I just couldn't get in the car and come down the street. Well, s- tell well, us why you couldn't get in the car, Eric. Well, about two weeks ago on, so uh, yeah, it'll be two weeks on Saturday, I was driving up to Warren, Michigan to buy a new set of cylinder heads for my car to increase the power of said Mustang. Uh, 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 oh, I no. and, and? The, super, the supercharger froze up on me, and, well, the car wouldn't turn. So, uh, the engine wouldn't turn over anymore. So mm. it, the uh, supercharger is at Vortec. Uh, it'll be another week or so before they can even get around to looking at it, and yes, then sir. another week or two after that, they should figure out if they can rebuild it or not. So mm. I am without transportation at the moment. Do you really need more power, Eric? Yes. <laughs> Why? He's got the power. Because, because 400 at the rear wheel is uh, not enough. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. What's that song, Ben? I've got the power. I wish you had that. <laughs> I, I need, Nintendo I need, power. Oh. I need my daily driver to be capable of mid se- mid ten second quarter miles on pump gas. So Why? you never know when you're going to have to get away from the stoplight really fast for no apparent reason, or roast exactly. the tires down to the rim. And that is or those are the <laughs> those are the dulcet tones of none other than Christian Conover. How are you, Craig? I'm doing swell. Got stung by a horde of bees before coming in today, but hopefully that. Goes I guess down. that gives new meaning to the term swell. Yes, then. it does. <laughs> like Jerry Lewis. <laughs> anyway, we've, we've got a line of a great story today. Just steamroll ahead. Pretend it never happened. Got a line of a great stories today um, that we've handpicked from the bounty of the Internet this week. So mm. take a bu- we'll, we'll be taking a bite out of those here in just a second. And, Jason, I think you're going to start. Oh, I, I didn't even say grace yet. I'm sorry. Well, get with the program, Ben, and <laughs> say grace. That's all right. It tastes so good you didn't even want to wait. <laughs> That's right. Know. It's like Thanksgiving dinner. You've been fasting for three days. Waiting for that turkey to come out of the oven, and when it's when it's out, you go to town. Is yep. that the trick? I've never been able to do that. You, the trick is you take muscle relaxers first, <laughs> so you can uh, eat more food. That makes sense. Just like when you go to an all-you-can-eat buffet, Jason. Hey guys, Citroen has a new concept car. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> Tell us talk, about Talk it. about stay on target. We're too close. Stay on target. I think um, that pilot on the, the Death Star run, he had finished his hip flask <laughs> yeah. before going in the... Well, at least the he made a good program. Yes, he did. <laughs> Motion picture program. Anyway, tell, Jason, tell us about Citroen. Citroen. Uh, yes, the name Citroen is synonymous with creativity in the uh, car design biz. Uh, and next week they'll be they'll be unleashing their newest uh, mind bending concept. The I think it's Tubic or Tubic. Tubic because it's one B. Right. Well, they should have spelled it with a P, right? It says Tubic mm. here um, at the Frankfurt Show. Uh, Better than two bits. Part of the uh, inspiration for this concept uh, are Citroën's two uh, classic vans, the Tub, or T-U-B, <laughs> and the H-Y. I have a model of the H-Y on my desk. It looks like it was made out of corrugated so, iron. Oh, you get a Tubby. Yeah, <laughs> Tubby. Yeah. Good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but proportions are really the only similarity between the uh, uh, Tubic and and these classics, uh, if you look at the link that's in the show notes, uh, the body of this uh, van is amazingly sculptural, uh, and they have these really neat uh, layer upon layer kind of surface aesthetics at the front and the back, which really help break it out of that cube van aesthetic mm -hmm. even further. Um, this this is a really good example of what a van could be if people really actually sat down and thought about it. I mean, it doesn't it looks have like to be. a 21st be. century mystery mobile. It looks really <laughs> neat. I, I, uh, I'm not as... Scoob! I'm not, <laughs> I'm not as crazy about the interior. The interior's got some really, you know, compared to the exterior, the interior form language is kind of pr on the primitive side, just for me personally. It, and I don't, it's, I, it's not that I have anything against purple. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, you don't see color, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> But overall, yeah, it's 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 pretty uh, it's pretty out there, and that's what you would expect from uh, from Citroen. Uh, the other thing that's neat is there's a neat little graphic on the driver's side panel that, that's kind of reminiscent of the kind of graphics you would see on the side of '70s vans. You know, wolves howling at the moon, blaring or? everybody's working for the weekend, <laughs> and, and things like that. Yeah, but uh, I'm sorry, am I seeing correctly that the interior has a chaise lounge? It might. I, I I'm so busy looking at the uh, wave pattern in the top there. That, uh, I See, I'm not so interested simply because, well, it's missing one thing from in my book. Okay. A nautical, waterbed? Nautical steering wheel. <laughs> nautical <laughs> steering wheel. <laughs> so you can get impaled when you get in an accident. You got all those oh, spikes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. true. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's my I got a joke about that. You do? Not about the impaling, about the nautical steering wheel. I really like the, the windshield uh, kind of wrapping through the A-pillar into yeah. the uh, side window. Yeah. That, that looks really good. And... Uh, I don't know. Just it, the overall form language is really interesting. If people that are listening to the audio podcast want to see this vehicle, where can they go to check out some pictures of it? Where can they get the link? The link is in the show notes. Where can people find the show notes? Oh goodness. Um, well, round. Round turns with round. Round with show. Uh, Roundabout round. show dot. Um, yes. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Except don't put the question mark on yes. it. No question mark. <laughs> yeah. Roundaboutshow.com, not roundaboutshow, question mark com. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, that Citroen Tubic concept certainly is dreamy. And Eric, you've got an article up next that uh, is something that would facilitate people doing their own vehicular dreams. Yes, yes. As enthusiasts and followers of the car industry, many of us aren't, do armchair quarterback the decisions of the car company executives. You look at some of the decisions of, say, Rick Wagner or Bob, Marde Bob Nardelli or Dan Ackerson of late, and you think, how clueless can they be? Well, there's a startup software company that's looking to bring out a game, a uh, game in quotes, similar to something like The Sims or Railroad Tycoon, mm -hmm. except it'll take place in the automotive world. You get to design and engineer your own line of vehicles and then market them to the public. Uh, you can see if you'll be the next Alan Mulally or the next John Smale. Uh, this is a te the team is currently seeking some funding to finish out uh, finish a finish out this um, program. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got the episode title already. We haven't even started the, the damn show yet. The program uh, episode. <laughs> the program. They're, Spelled the uh, episode. You can go to you can there's a, you'll, you'll find the link to uh, how to get there in the show notes. But they're raising money on a system called uh, Rocket Hub, which is similar to Kickstart, and they're trying to raise a hundred thousand dollars so they can finish uh, coding everything up and get it out. But it looks very cool. Uh, there's a video 
uh, a YouTube video that they've got up there that kind of shows the the beginnings of the game and you, you designing your own car and how you can tweak everything and uh, engineer the the motor and the suspension and things like that. Do you it's, get to crash test cool. it? <laughs> I believe so. Wow, that'd be sweet. Very cool. Yeah, that's pretty clever. I, I hope it turns out better than like Sim City did. I could never get those games to function properly. Too much micromanagement. <laughs> but that's just me. Don't let me throw a wet blanket on well, this. To be fair, it is you are designing cars, so it's more than likely that you'll go broke doing it. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes, yes. Well, I've got the next article here on the rundown, and it uh, involves everyone's favorite quirky automaker that is not Citroen. Take a guess. It's on the rundown, guys. Come on. Tata. Tesla. There you go. Apparently, Subaru is trying a new <laughs> guerrilla marketing campaign. <laughs> you could say they're sharing the love. Well, not really. We found this doozy of a video on streetfire.net, and it looks like it comes from Arab news agency Al Jazeera. Apparently, an Israeli Impreza driver plowed right into two children playing in the streets. Sounds horrifying, I know. You can almost taste the impact. Now, to be fair, these kids weren't exactly innocent. They were throwing rocks at this guy's car. What's worse, Subaru or a crossbow? I'm not sure, but you be the jury. Hmm. Thoughts, Ben? Mm. Crossbow. I think crossbow still yeah. takes the cake. But mm-hmm. this guy, you can see this him coming kid around the corner. Wasn't hurt. He just, whoa, flip, where we go? Look, it, it almost um, looks yeah. fake, but it's not. And yeah. Stuff. <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> Program. Program. Pretty lady right there. <laughs> not speaking English. Coming up on the BBC. The <laughs> <Rumba>. <laughs> But yeah. those kids, those kids go flying. They they're just totally ragdolling. And look at look how safe that Subaru was. No damage. The, the driver was fine. And he could keep going. Airbags didn't even go off. Well, well that's what makes. A did Subaru you see how? Subaru. Did you see how bony those kids were? That's just, that's how you lose a windshield there. I'm exactly. In most cars. You get an elbow in that glass. That safety glass is gonna crack. Time to call safety. I don't know for all those commercials the Subarus are running. It sounds like they build cars uh, designed specifically for hitting people and, the, and the passengers safely. surviving. So. <laughs> I don't know. It's, oh, dear. well. Speaking of the what, Middle um, East, right? Yeah, let's uh, let's let's head on over to the Middle East here. But we were just there. Uh, well, let's, head let's stay the there. Middle stay well, on over to the another, Middle East. Another part of that part of the world. Yeah, it's no secret that Iraq and the U.S. aren't exactly BFFs, uh, but there is one thing that Iraqis love about America: our cars. It turns out that large, spacious, comfortable vehicles coming out of Detroit are all the rage in the greater Baghdad metropolitan area. Based in large part on President Obama's popularity with the Iraqi people, the image of cars like the Chrysler 300C as being comfortable and strong are helping to give American brands major sales increases in the Arab nation. I guess luxury sedans are a good consolation prize for having to live in Baghdad. (laughs) Although I would argue Baghdad has better roads than we do in Michigan. You're probably right. Have you driven here? <laughs> I don't even need to because we have horrible roads here too, and I'm betting they're rivaling yours. How could you have horrible roads down there? You're in Mason Dixon country. It's sun belt, sunshine belt down there. The smile states. Yeah. And, I, and, by, and by nature of sunshine, that means we have good roads, right? Well, you don't have the freezing and thawing like we do. And, and, the, be... and the salt. and the... We, we still have all those things. Don't worry. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Mm. We've we've started we're using Mason Dixie now, Ben. <laughs> Remember, so, we're just no below the Mason Dixon. We're not we're not real deep south. Mm. You're barely stroke belt. <clears throat> See, I still have all my teeth, so Oh. Well there's what so you're doing. Far. Yeah, you're doing it wrong then. Yeah. Yeah. Waiting for someone to go there yeah. and <laughs> turn out to be Christian. Okay. Well, well yeah. Southerners Southerners appreciate heritage, right? Yes, they do. A lot of times you see the Confederate flag fr- flying, not as an affront to slavery or anything, but just they, they're proud of their past. Or Northern aggression. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, Jason, uh, you, your article deals with some history. Yes. So what's um, going on here? Uh, there's a group called the Historical Vehicle, the Historic Vehicle Association, which was founded by Haggerty uh, Insurance, which gives insurance for... And we just had a gentleman on that works for Haggerty. Uh, ah. John, fine, Jonathan Klein fine company. He drove his Model A down here. We interviewed Lovely. him. Lovely interview. Yeah. Uh, well, their historic vehicle association would like to uh, have the federal government create a national registry for historic cars. Those of you may, that may uh, drive up to a historic building and see a plaque out front, you know, the, it's historically registered, and that, that they do that for 
buildings and boats and airplanes and railways. They don't have anything like that for cars. And uh, that's something that they might want to do. The fear that um, the association has is that programs like programs, like programs, get it right. Like, sorry, like cash for clunkers that we had back in 09, I think it was, could send many significant automobiles to an early death. Uh, I think that these fears are overblown, actually, because if you think about it, there are several car enthusiasts in high-ranking places in Washington. Exhibit A, Vice President Joe Biden. He was recently uh, in an interview with Car and Driver, and he was talking about how the oh, Secret, was he? <laughs> well, the Secret yeah. Service won't let him drive his classic Corvette. He doesn't like that. Uh, but what they will do is they'll allow him to wash his Trans Am shirtless in the White House driveway. Oh. <laughs> 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 According to The Onion. <coughs> Which is America's finest news source. Yes, it is. God bless them. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen any of the videos they do. They do this one called uh, In the Know. It's like their Sunday morning chat like news roundup, and it's just the most absurd it's stuff. The They've best. got all these like experts that are just, oh, it is so good. Go watch it. But not right now, because you're watching this. I, but I, I apologize for hijacking this story and making it yes. into a story about Biden. Yes. Uh, but I think this is further and proof. And shirtless. That, oh. yeah, I, I think this is further proof that no matter what your political affiliation, Biden kicks ass and takes names. This is further proof. Take it off. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Scranton. Right? Uh, no, Amtrak I Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I so wish this were actually true that a, a politician... In, such a high position would actually do something like f labor related, working. Yeah. Anytime washing his cars. I love the guy who does impressions of him on SNL. Anytime, uh, it, like they have him doing the speech. Hey, cat's away. Joe's gonna play. <laughs> 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 you, just, you just see him doing that too. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. Eric, you're up. Yes, yeah. he is. Well, continuing continuing the theme of more power. It doesn't matter if you feel the need to insert your Tim Allen more powerful or yell in your best Jeremy Clarkson voice, power! <laughs> if you're uh, buying a pickup truck to work for to use for work or for towing, you're going to want more power. Kind of like how Charlie Sheen wants more hookers and drugs. Ooh. <laughs> Dead <laughs> hookers. And of course, Ben has the ready-made sound drop for that one, Eric. Yes, of course. Well, that's why it was there for Ben. To <laughs> that's why I had the dramatic pause. Any person who tells you that how a truck or any vehicle comes out of the factory is perfect and should not be changed because you think you're smarter or can do things better than the manufacturer is really a clueless moron who's not qualified to even take the short bus to school. Anything that comes down a production line is a compromise, a compromise for cost, for fuel economy, for, em for emissions, even more. So even in today's world where it's more and more difficult to improve your vehicle's performance, there are a few things that you can do that will often improve performance and fuel economy and even emissions, things like cold air intake, uh, for your cat back exhaust systems and even ECU flash programs are easy to do, very cost effective, and can be done by most po most people in a few hours with some basic hand tools. Now, what I would also like to say is that this article comes to us courtesy of PickupTrucks.com and is one of the last articles written by Mike Levine, uh, as he is now going to be coming from the Los Angeles area. Mike Levine, a former uh, guest on the Roundabout Show, and will now be working for Ford as the uh, director of uh, communications for the Ford truck program. So, hmm. sad, to, sad to see Mike leave uh, one of the best websites. Uh, He's a good guy. Uh, automotive website there is. He's a stand-up gentleman. He is very good. Yeah. So, anyways, this was just a uh, an interesting article on PickupTrucks.com about things you can do to improve your truck if you really need to use your truck for work. You know? But Eric, good write up. These do not just apply to trucks. I understand. No. <laughs> no, they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> nope, they don't. And that was that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Eric. Uh, drunk driving, we all know, is a pretty despicable act, and you don't need me to tell and, you And that. a common theme on Roundabout. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol can really bring out the worst in people, especially if they get behind the wheel, yoke, reins, or any sort of other vehicle control. But sometimes, just sometimes, these thoughtless drunkards can make us laugh, as in this quick case. A 40-year-old Pennsylvania man has been charged with driving under the influence after the boat and trailer he was towing overturned. Okay, you're saying, no big deal. Just get a high-low or a few burly gentlemen, and they'll have everything righted in a jiffy. Well, not exactly. Trouble is the man's load capsized, as he, and he kept on driving. 
According to FoxPhilly.com, where we found this story, after removing his pontoon boat from the water, he hit a parked car, which <laughs> caused everything to overturn. Predict- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making this up. Predictably, he's also been charged with resisting arrest and, as you'd expect, numerous other traffic violations. Now, I've got to ask the question. How drunk do you have to be to not notice the trailer you're dragging has flipped over? I'm thinking he bolted on some extra power to that truck. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) Touche. Aren't you going to hear a horrible grinding sound of just... (sighs) Sparks flying and... Sparks, among other things. I mean, no, not not over the sound of ACDC and the uh, and the free flow exhaust. That's true. Yes. He's got a he's got the uh, he probably had those uh, they're like garbage can sized stacks coming out of the bed. Right, exactly. Yeah, a, a pair of them, yeah. yeah those massive yeah. They're cooling towers. You could call them that. <laughs> so he's just humming along with that going <laughs> It's like a Sasquatch. <laughs> and he can see the black smoke pouring out of those pipes. <laughs> The black, the exhaust. Right. Yeah. Yes, that. Da-da. What he Da-da. said. Da-da. Da-da. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of big, noisy vehicles. There we go. Thank you. Let's face it. Who doesn't love construction vehicles? They're big, powerful, loud, and can make a hell of a mess real quick. The ultimate sandbox toy. The only problem is you have to be a construction worker to play with one. Until now. Boo. Hmm? Oh. Oh. What's that you <laughs> say? A Las Vegas company is now offering the opportunity to play with construction trucks like bulldozers and excavators in a giant dirt pit. Starting at around 200 bucks for an hour and a half of playtime, Vegas tourists have the opportunity to have all the fun of digging in the dirt with trucks without the actual work of a real construction crew. Let's just hope nobody digs up some degenerate gambler who couldn't pay off his mm-hmm. debts. <laughs> Question for you. Where did they find enough dirt? You know, it's really tough because Vegas is not known for having much dirt or sand in the area, but uh, they they must have gone out of state and gotten some. Yeah, well, the import duties on that. Well, yeah. maybe they ex maybe they imported maybe, maybe it from overseas. Maybe that's part of the job. Maybe, maybe as part of your time, you get to drive the uh, the dump truck that's carrying the dirt that you'll get to then play in. <laughs> We've outsourced our dirt gathering. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's pretty cool. But two hundred dollars for an hour and a half? No, thank you. <laughs> a little steep. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. yeah. At the same time, I'm thinking I really still want to do that. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> what Next about time you, Jason? Same with Craig. No. Yeah. Where did they get all that sand? Was from it from all the from all the uh, from digging all the foundations for all those 92 story uh, casinos, mm. Mm. and also yeah. from all the dead bodies they've had to dig up over the years for that have been buried out in the desert. That's what I'm saying. You gotta be careful. One of those, one or two of those, might have slipped into that pit. Remember that time you found those bones on the highway, Christian, and never told anyone. <laughs> I wonder if you dig up a body, you get like an extra free hour or something. <laughs> Remember that time you watched those two women drown? I think it's time for a commercial break. Yeah. I actually think I think you we're ra- we're coming to the end of the news Sheesh. program here. Oh, but you got to wrap things up program? for us, Jason. I... Well, you've got the last article on the list. That's right. Yeah, I well. do. <laughs> For those of you who are following along in the notes, your eyes do not deceive you. Yes, that's a Lamborghini with a mattress on its roof. And a set of box springs. <laughs> yes, that's true. And I, Yeah, it, it's, it is a Lambo with a mattress and box spring on its roof snapped in Toronto, a world-class city in Canada. Um, this, <laughs> what? this photo, ba- what? I've never heard it pronounced like that. There are times where it, it, I, I thought I'd add a little bit of you know, regional variety, r- regional variety to the program. <laughs> right. <laughs> this photo, for me at least, it begs an obvious question: If you have enough money to buy a Gallardo, why would spider. you, or a spider at that, why wouldn't you splurge for a modern mattress that doesn't need a box spring underneath it? Here, my, my guess is uh, the top wouldn't go up, so they bought mattresses to keep the rain out. That's exactly what I was going to say. Was, this is was, obviously I'm, a topless. I would take I would take it a little further. If you can afford a Lamborghini Gallardo Spider, why are you picking up your own mattresses yeah, exactly. and not having them delivered? I, I theorized that perhaps there was a strike and the delivery people couldn't bring the mattress and you and you wanted to sleep on that mattress tonight. Well, my, my theory is they wanted to have happen exactly what happened and get on Jalopnik. Ma- guys, you're if missing you, the point. I, I think say, if you really if you really wanted to sleep on a mattress and you owned a Lamborghini Gallardo, all you got to do is drive by some bar. And, pick, and take some chick home, and you just sleep on her mattress. That's true. I, see, here's what I think happened. See how the streets are damp? 
-hmm. Clearly it rained. Okay. We know that. Um, also, Lamborg and I is part of the Volkswagen group. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that there are some quality issues baked into the, the vehicle. I'm postulating perhaps these folks didn't purchase mattresses, but they scrounged them from the side of the road that somebody was throwing out because the top wouldn't go up in the rain. And that, that's that's um, just my theory. Don't, that, I'm going with either Jalopnik whore or Broken Top. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So uh, you be the jury, frankly. We're not here to impose our rule of law on you guys. We're not we the moral report. sextant guiding this, this. This program is all about the listeners. Yes. We'll report. You decide. Moral exactly. sextant. Jason, you're guffawing. I see that. Moral sextant should, preceded should the moral Should we make compass. an official drinking uh, game that every time somebody says program? <laughs> <laughs> We'd have people in the emergency room yes. if that were the case. <laughs> and probably a you stack of lawsuits. You should but drink anyway. So... Anyway, guys, a little dabble do you, and I think that is just about enough news anymore. And That's might, more of a glob. Yeah, Any more would leave behind an oily residue. A so, <laughs> with that, <laughs> we will continue our lively chat with Mr. Rumblestrip, Eric Tritko, Christian Conover from the Wheelspin Network, as well as artist, educator, and best-selling author Jason White. After the break, we'll find out what celebrity's voice has been picked up by TomTom Tom for its navigation systems, and we'll dive headfirst into another installment of Raceway Hearsay Plus. Versus is on the docket. Ooh. So, so, don't, dun, dun, dun. so don't you walk away from your computer. Don't open another tab in Firefox. And don't even think about getting up to use the toilet because we will be right back. Toilet. You can hold it in. Toilet. If you do, just turn the volume up real loud. Yeah. Everyone in the house will love you for it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so got to talk about our friends at Advance Auto Parts. I beg you, please go to our website, roundaboutshow.com. Click on their advertisement. It's in the right-hand sidebar of the page. It is impossible to miss. It's flashy. It's bright red and yellow. It's like a McDonald's dining room. So click on that, and that is your portal, your one-stop shop for mega savings. If you go there, you can save $10 on a purchase of $30, $20 on an order of $50, or take $100 off of an order exceeding $1. Pardon me, take $30 off an order exceeding $100. That suddenly got to be an amazing deal. Yes, it did. That Again, that is 10 off 30, 20 off 50, or 30 off 100. All you have to do is Which click is on the nice link in our sidebar, roundaboutshow.com, and enter the promo code. What is it, A123, I believe? I don't know, but you'll have to go to roundaboutshow.com to figure that out. It's right there. You know, I did that, Act and fast. I saved myself $10 off of a, uh, off of a brake rotor. Now that's, that's great value bargain. for money. It is. For the I paid twenty two dollars instead of thirty two dollars for the E forty six. No, not for the E forty six. For uh, my sister's nineteen ninety two Volvo two forty sedan. I was gonna say that's awfully cheap for a BMW part. No, that would, that would get me the box that yes. the comes in. Has your rear subframe ripped out yet? No, still there. Oh, good. I digress. Don't forget. Um, every order that exceeds seventy five dollars, Advance throws in free shipping. Free. Shipping delivered to what your door. What? What? Say again, hmm? Christian, you got a question? I'm saying it's a bargain. Yes, it is. It's more than a bargain. It's free. It can't be a bargain if it's free. It's so, the best bargain. Exactly. And, but if, if you want to visit the friendly folks at Advance, you can still do that. You can pick your items up in store. That's always an option. Or you can go for the free shipping if you exceed 75 bucks. And even if you're not in the market for parts right now, either repair or uh, aftermarket, you can still click on the link, roundaboutshow.com, to show Advance and others that you care about this show and you care about us. And we do appreciate your support because we do this, spend our Fridays, spend our weekends for you guys, loyal fans. I'm, ki I'm getting the bar, but instead we're here doing this. So roundaboutshow.com, click on the Advance link, show them you care. And we thank you personally. It's so true. moving along, it is time for Ben's favorite type of sex. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so Jezza Clarkson, Mr. Jeremy Clarkson, BBC presenter of Top Gear. He can be a rather abrasive personality, or at least controversial. No. No. Uh -huh. Well, the In the world. <laughs> the fine folks at Tom Tom, makers of those portable navigation systems, have apparently just approved his voice for use on their devices. Hmm. How do you like that? Do you like the idea of Jeremy Clarkson guiding you to your final destination? The only way it would work is if it's filled with tons of hyperbole and insult. As long as he yeah. doesn't call me a wanker. 
No, he has to be able, he has to be insulting and offensive, or else it just doesn't seem to like if you miss a turn. Yeah. No, you you're, wanker! You, no, you, you're like, stupid. You're going the wrong way. Yeah. Stop <laughs> riding the bronze pony. If you're driving a Porsche too, he's got to constantly give you <laughs> crap the whole time. <laughs> Scrap. <laughs> Scrap. <laughs> Scrap. Scrap. <laughs> There's your mispronunciation. Today. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, you 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 declutched. I did. Oh, I double clutched and like. Yeah. <laughs> hut, hut, hut. <laughs> you I rev think, I think that if you drive a uh, a Prius, <laughs> then it probably would just blow up. Right. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson, feature. greatest auto journalist ever, or merely great auto journalist? One of the greats. I think yeah. he's carved out a a niche for himself in the halls of of. He's, he's pretty damn good. I would say half the, the aspiring YouTubers. The most entertaining. He, okay, turn, I, I will say this though. I I still. I still high and very hold in very high regard John Davis because nobody delivers uh, mm. segments with the, the the tonality that he does. Mm. The fender flares on the Jeep Wrangler make it seem much more like a party <laughs> animal. What are we? <laughs> We're glad to have you with us. Yeah, <laughs> I, I tell you what, I think that Motor Week by themselves is keeping all Jeep manufacturers in business. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you were saying something about Jezza. I said he may be the most entertaining auto journalist ever. Uh, he is certainly not the best auto journalist ever. Well, he's got the backing of the BBC. When, when, when I saw the episode where they took a Robin Reliant and, and, and made it into a space shuttle, I'm like, all right, wait a minute. What, what kind of a show is this now? It's entertainment. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, exactly. And it's theater theater of the eyes. About. Entertainment and journalism are not necessarily the same thing. But they thing. can be. They can well, and that's the thing that everyone misses about Top Gear is that it's an entertainment show yes. first, a car show yes. second. Yes. And, that, and as long as you go into it knowing that, it's awesome. Then you can enjoy it. If you if you go in there expecting hard hitting journalism, no. But the the challenges they do are so awesome. Scripted as hell, of course, yeah. but effing hilarious. Mm -hmm. The Peel P fifty segment they did a few years back. Oh, that was one of the best. That, that was one what of was the best one? things they did. The the Peel P fifty is the smallest car ever ever made. Oh yeah. And and they and they had one where he's driving it through the BBC building That's and, funny. and it, that that was an absolutely brilliant segment. They, really they well can, done. They can do some very serious things too. The uh, the segment they did on Air Ten Senna about a year or year and a half ago <laughs> was maybe some of the best. Was probably the best fifteen or seventeen minutes I've ever seen. Yeah, they uh, they also did a nice uh, recounting of the of the classic Gilles Villeneuve Rene Arnoux duel from nineteen seventy nine, mm -hmm. which is the greatest <laughs> Formula One duel in history. Mm -hmm. The greatest. Well, we'll get to some raceway stuff. Well, speaking in a second, of, uh, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, speaking of yeah. some uh, racing. But question: All you guys have seen Top Gear. Who's your favorite presenter of the trio? You've got Jeremy Clarkson. He's kind of the, the ringleader. Richard Hammond, and of course James May. They all have their own unique personalities. They're kind of this each of a third of this wheel that goes together. But thoughts on the presenters? I like Hammond because he reminds me of one of the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Davey, he's Davy Jones. He looks like Davy Jones to Davey me. Jones. <laughs> I like I don't know I'm a fan of May because he always comes up with the with the most creative insults for the and wrestling. Captain Slow he's always the like generally the Captain last Slow. one to show up at the mm -hmm. events and he's got the the proper he's vehicle he's better than anybody else on the show yeah. he's always has the I proper yeah. Eric I I kind of I want to I want to say May probably not just because he's so ridiculously dry but in an entertaining way and you know dry people can be boring but he's yeah. not so. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna they're tweaking what they're writing for for Hammond because he's even said you know the the whole hamster thing and and being the comedy uh, relief person has gotten old and so yeah. they're gonna actually work with him a little jazz him up a little season. bit. Yeah, you mean you won't get zero points for every challenge? Huh? Yeah, exactly. I like Clarkson. I got to go with him because he's so. He's so he's the, he's absurdly the, over the top sometimes. Like he's the straw that stirs the drink. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. With the V8 Corvette engine. Like the one they they drove across the salt flats in Botswana. They had to take like two wheel drive cars across southern Africa basically, and they they had to lighten. He and James May had to lighten their vehicles. They were too heavy for the to drive across this dried out salt flat. They kept sinking in, breaking through the crust. It was getting stuck and stuff. So they had to lighten the vehicles, take doors off and stuff. So after that part of the journey, they had to prepare their vehicles in case wild animals attack. So that involved rebuilding them somewhat. Mm -hmm. So Clarkson put this steel. 
Well, no, Clarkson put like this wooden makeshift pallet on the side that was hinged at the top like a gullwing door. And he's like, look over there, I've got a gullwing door. It's rock <laughs> solid. It's just the one. The one I kind of like was um, the the one they did in um, South America where they crossed the cross. That was good. But the one that, when they went to the actual North Pole and uh, Jezza and James are having uh, hmm. uh, gin uh, gin and tonics on the drive up. <laughs> I missed that. Well, coming up on Top Gear Weekly. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> we mentioned racing. We got our next segment. Raceway Hearsay, I believe. Raceway Hearsay! Excellent. You don't know how happy Ben was to be able to use that again. You, 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 I'm so glad you saved that sound bite. <laughs> ben, thank you. Ben is a pack rat when it comes to computer files well, and stuff. Thank you for saving that. Excellent. Well, Raceway Hearsay... Um, if any of you saw Indy car racing this weekend, we're going to start out by showing you a really spectacular highlight that occurred at the Baltimore Grand Prix. You guys queuing it up there? I am. So for those of you on audio. Through visually. Yeah, for, yeah, for those of you on audio. Go ahead and explain to us what happens here. Uh, this is an onboard shot uh, from Elio Castroneves' car. And uh, unbeknownst to him, Tony Kanan, who's coming up behind him at breakneck speed, has lost his brakes and basically has no way to stop. And let's be clear, this is on the front straight of the track where they're getting up towards about 180 miles yes, an hour. Yes, very quick. This, oh. this actually happened in practice, not during the actual race. Yeah, this was Saturday morning. Yeah, and uh, pretty spectacular. What is this happens. a bad day at work? Uh, yes. Mm. Could have been worse. Yes. The good news is that uh, he was okay, not a scratch. So basically the other guy, I don't follow racing, he's a dude, comes up behind and ramps off the other guy's car and flies. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, mm. And, uh, I mean, th both of these guys were very lucky. Not, I mean, Tony's lucky because he's, he's traveling at ridiculous speed into these runoff areas, which, which if you notice, they have lined with tires. And, and those tires, as inexpensive as they are, they, they really do do a great job of slowing the cars down. It's like running into a balloon. Um, but equally lucky was... Um, Elio because, you know, he could have had his head taken off. Mm -hmm. Well, and if you look at the in-car footage, I mean, the the, uh, the front left tire of uh, yeah. Tony Kanaan's car mm -hmm. came within about six inches of his head. Well, yeah. here's 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 a couple things on that. Number one, the camera angle, the, cam the lens on that camera is super wide angle, so it right. looks much more dramatic than it really was. Two, the way that the cars are designed with the with the airbox intake behind, you know, behind the driver's head. It would be. I mean, you'd virtually have to come at you, come at someone at a ninety degree angle for for the tire to have hit their head. So it's sort of, of inadvertently in, inadvertently designed to um, steer or you know bounce someone away from from that. So yes, it looks very dramatic. Um, well, Eric, but, I but the I have to believe that uh, Elio Castrovenes was not thinking about all of the things that were no. keeping him from getting hit in the head. Though he's no. probably imagine watching the uh, car at one hundred miles one hundred eighty miles an hour next to his head. J J Eric Go Jason has say, some. What the, what the bleep was that? Eric Jason's got some furrowed brows here, and I think he's thinking poppycock right now. <laughs> what you just said. I, I, I don't. I'm not entirely. I mean, I, I, gear, I grant you that the airbox probably protected his head to some degree, but uh, I don't know. It, it, it th that, you know, if if, if you're actually physically in the car, I'm sh I'm, I'm sure that uh, if I were Elio, I would be changing my. Pants There's a moment that. of uh, of. Evacuation, I'm imagining. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> well, to me, to me, the the more dramatic one was Canaan because every time I see a car airborne like that, I think of Greg Moore. Oh, mm -hmm. that yeah. brought back. Okay, so then that that clicked in for somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, we got two other videos too okay. that you, you scraped now, now, together. Now here, here's that was just a, a highlight that was really worth showing. But there's a, there's a couple other things I want to bring up here. Indy car racing is really, really going to hell in a handbasket. Just. I personally think this. Mm. Some of you out there may not agree with me, and you're you're welcome to that opinion. Even if you're wrong. But uh, the officiating has gotten ridiculous. IndyCar Racing actually tried to restart a race on an oval recently when it was obviously too wet to do so. They had every driver and owner uh, screaming over the radio, we cannot go back to green flag racing. It is too wet. And what'd they do? Green, green, green. And, and predictably chaos ensues uh and then the other thing that was annoying about this is there were people on message boards that said up oh, danica started the act and this no it could have been any one of them that spun and it just happened to be danica <laughs> <this time. laughs> but 
it, it was just so ridiculous. And then, of course, they go down and they get the uh, uh, reaction from people on the sidelines, and they're like, yep, that was going to happen. And, and, and <laughs> it was, <laughs> you know, big, Known big quantity. surprise. And the, but the most amazing thing that happened uh, I'm after sorry, this, I'm laughing because I'm watching this video. But you know, the, the, the most amazing thing that happened later on is, it, and Will Power was taken out by this accident, and he was so angry that as he's walking up the pit lane, he gave a double bird to the officials, <laughs> which uh, I'm not sure if that landed him in any hot water, money wise. Uh, yeah, but, I think uh, he ended up with like a fifty or hundred thousand dollar fine. After good the grief. But uh, in, in defense of, waving. I, I will I will grant the IndyCar officials that the, the guy who runs uh, the uh, officiating he they they did say afterwards uh, yeah we blew it we we should not have gone back there. but it's like come on you've got everybody saying everybody and their brothers saying we can't go back and they claimed that That's they didn't have green means go green is money. But it's like any <laughs> That's all that matters. They were trying to explain in a way as there's this gray area when the track is kind of moist and you're not too sure whether you should be racing. I'm like, it's an oval. You don't race on a damp oval, period. Okay. It, it, it's just, it, this is not even a debate. I, I don't understand why they even thought about this, because there was moisture on the lens and everything. Well, what if they had Moist. snow tires? Let's... <laughs> Maybe if it's they had, not, never mind. Maybe if they had grooved <laughs> tires, but you don't race on ovals with with rain tires. They don't bring them. Mm -hmm. They're not there. Mm. And then the next, the, the final video here. This is an example of how the driving standards in IndyCars cars have really gone downhill. Uh, I'm sorry, Jason. This, this video is like Janica. <laughs> Willie sorry. D in the chat says, "Hey, Craig, please stop the program for a second. I have to get something to eat." <laughs> did he spell it properly? Did he spell program properly? <laughs> he did. With, he spelled program with a U. Thank you. Good. All right. <laughs> Sorry, sidebar. Um, you know, it, there are going to be incidents here and there in IndyCar racing. That, that's to be expected. But this next one coming up, this, this, is a, this is not an isolated incident. You have these situations on street courses, especially, especially where they're coming to a corner. Someone's got the line clearly, and somebody decides to poke their nose down in the inside because they just, you know, they see a little bit of daylight, and they have no business being down there. This incident kicks off a giant traffic jam. Everybody who's on the inside actually goes, oh, okay, I'll see you later, and they just go around. But I'm just watching this going, he had oh, no... God. Yeah, this yeah, is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. He, had, he had no business poking this his nose down there. and stupid. That is just stupid, and it looks so <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> They're just going around, you know, doo -doo -doo. If, if you happen to be on the inside, it's oh, like... God, the guy stalled it. Clutch, clutch. <laughs> yeah. It, because I, all right, I was there this weekend, and, and oh, that yeah? was... Yeah, and it was pretty hilarious to watch this because, of course, everyone else standing around is just watching the Jumbotrons like, really? Yeah. <laughs> and they're just, did they do a, a transition? They're still all parked. They're still there parked. <laughs> Not moving. Yeah. But, you know, it, the, the annoying thing is... I love the guy down on the bottom left who's, like, literally got his hands up in the air like, seriously? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, it, you know, it, it, it's racing 101. If you don't have... You've got to be able to claim the line before you get to the corner. You know, but if you want to attempt that, and mm -hmm. he and he's just he's got his nose poking down where his where his, there's no way he's gonna pull that off, no way, yep. impossible. I and he starts. Was... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Christian. What? No, that wasn't me. Go ahead, Eric. I say as bad as this was, it, I, wasn't it the Edmonton race that was even worse than this, where it was literally the a festival of carbon fiber, where he went two laps, there was a crash. They well, they you know, you, you know why this is happening so much more often. Again, back well, some, to the officiating, some, they keep well, doing these stupid uh, two-file restarts all the time. Well, it's like they're that, trying to invent accidents or create accidents. That's the drama some people of, want. Some of the uh, some of the people who are designing these street circuits need to be slapped on the side of the head, too, because there's no way an open-wheel car can go one-and-a-half cars wide on some of this stuff. And they, they, where, the, where this pileup was, I mean, that is a 25-mile-an-hour first-gear hairpin corner. I mean, come on. Yeah. No, it, it, well, do, I, it does look really I, tight. I was at uh, the Sunday morning driver meeting for the F2000 cars, and one of the uh, coaches or whatever uh, got up and was saying at one point, he's like, if any of you actually believes that you are going to be able to go, you know, not even talk about three cars wide through a turn, but just two cars wide through a turn, you have bad expectations. Hmm. It's just not going to happen. He literally said that. Like, I have a video of it on my on my YouTube channel where he just he said, like, if you think you're going to be able to go through like that, you don't know what you're doing. Which, again, speaking goes back of to the not whole thing knowing, about street and for those of our listeners that are confused, so am I. But um, 
It's all right, Craig. What's it's, confusing? You know, you can, you can, <laughs> watch I, a race once in a while. You'll know. No, I, I don't follow any sports, motorsports or otherwise. You don't say. <laughs> well. Well. Well, I mean, it's, anybody can see that, that no, he, he went no. for a hole that was not yeah. there. Oh, yeah. It didn't exist. Very good illustrative uh, uh, videos of the problem that you're talking about. Just incompetence, it seems. Racing when it's pouring rain it, or saturated. Incompetence on both sides yes. of, of the... Of the uh, of the coin, however you want to say it, officiating and the driving. Mm -hmm. I'm like, come on, we can do better than this. What can save Indy? Well, I think the fact that they're going to be having a, a chassis uh, program that that allows people to modify <laughs> mm -hmm. it and do their own thing. They had to push that back a year, mm. so that's that's going to delay it a bit because it, th there's a lot of expense involved. I just the drivers need to be a little bit more courteous out there and be more respectful yeah. of the space around them. It, it, it looks like they have no respect for each other out there. And, and it's, it's kind of disconcerting. Well, Somebody's uh, going to get hurt. I will ask you again, Jason, what can Indy do to improve? But I want a response in the form of haiku. Let Danica go to NASCAR. <laughs> oh, don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm no good at throwing haiku together at the Sorry. last minute. Sorry. Well, I think that's a, that's a good place to terminate yes. this. Thank you for that addition of throwing a grenade. That's three plays now. Three plays have gotten out of that five. Don't. Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, don't so hide that speed. in a bushel basket. <laughs> well, you are our resident raceway here. You say. can buy the whole seat, but you're all going to need the edge. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, that is true. The edge. That was an old magazine advertisement. If one you miss this, you better be dead. <laughs> <Retail>. <laughs> what is this from? There was an advertisement like that, Eric. Sunday, the Sunday, no. Sunday. Oh, the featuring God. Vorian, the drag car robot of the future that actually transforms into a two-story two, two tall robot. Right. Then it's the battle of the monster trucks and war of the tanks. Featuring the all-new Bigfoot Fast Tracks. Tickets now! I can't, I, the Silver Dome Box Office and all Ticketmaster Outlet. I, I can't think of the guy's name right uh, off the top of my head, it's, but I actually have worked with him. At, it's going to be uh, war, 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 war. He's a good guy. I have no idea what just happened. You don't remember those Is commercials? That robot that eats cars? Yeah, like yeah, okay. the Carosaurus Rex or yeah. whatever. I really hope he doesn't lose his job, because what's he going to do? Go go announce things at the grocery store? Clean up on aisle six. <laughs> six, six. <laughs> Price check on Rune Jones. Lettuce on sale. <laughs> yes. I love it. He should, he should do the uh, the safety videos for airplanes. <laughs> Concerned about your heart health? Try fish oil. <laughs> oil, oil, oil. One, Emergency six, one, exits zero. over the wings. Keeping in mind they may be behind you. <laughs> I well, love yeah. that's, uh, wow, that's very good, Jason. You certainly are, you, you're an artist and a voice. Voice over. Uh, I did a whole new voice. slew of VO for, for one, AM, six, 16, one, three. AM 1610. 16. And I'm really looking forward to doing one. What are they? Is just give us a, just give us a hint. You don't have to do them or even that a thirty watt AM station. Uh, they have a broadcast radius of three miles, uh, <laughs> but you can hear them on the web too. You're listening to Telepathic Surgery with Jeff Fournier. Don't call him foreigner on AM sixteen ten Hamtramck. Foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Are you in the mood for jazz? Well, you're a lucky son of a bee because we. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I Things expected. Like the, that is. Yeah. The, but yeah, That's you got to awesome. do some for roundabout. I think I'd be I'd be happy to do voiceovers. Wow. You come up with a list of of copy. I'll come in here and I'll just rattle them off one after the other. Okay, well we'll, we'll have to think of something. And, I, and I'm pro bono, so it's not going to cost you a thing. You got a cup, cup of coffee, Sonny yeah. Bono. <laughs> Let him rest in peace, Eric. And with Good that, Jason, I might shoot you an email about that. Like, really? Yeah. Oh wow, That's uh, fantastic. Fantastic. How many times has this happened to you? Anyway, moving along. <laughs> Sorry. I think it's time for one of our favorite shows. What is? What would that be, Ben? Versus. <laughs> you put no effort into saying it. Versus. Here's, Versus. here's Jason like blowing the doors off with voiceover quality. You've got to have like, contrast, Craig. Contrast. I know. That's what made it so good. Versus. I'm not tearing you down this time, Ben. Versus. All right. As you Wait, know. Hold on. Without the music. Jason? Versus. All right. That's going in next time. Mark it, Ben. And so I do. <laughs> and now, back to <laughs> verses. Right. As you versus. know, or maybe don't if this is the first time listening to Roundabout, but anyway, in this game, two panelists debate the merits and demerits of 
one particular vehicle. Pros and cons. Exactly. The other two act as judges and pick a winner. Simple enough. Mm -hmm. We will have one 45-second round for each side, pro and con, followed up by a 15-second rebuttal. It's, it's basically a debate. Team. It's a debate, basically. So, I think what's next, Ben, we have to choose... We have to determine who will be pro, who will be con, and who will be our judges today. So Ben will draw from a hat. A genuine Autoline hat. Exactly. Are we are we still playing Miss Pac-Man? Or? Yes. That's part of the, the um, you yeah. know. Ambiance. Ambiance. The Tron or whatever we're doing. Ambiance. Sounds like a Walsh College ad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Aww. Fade out. All right. I'm picking out a piece of paper that All says right. number one. Who's going to be our first poison here? All right. Christian Conover is yes. going to be a judge. Dun, 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 dun. dun. Wapner. Next we have Craig Cole. I'll be amazed if he's not a judge. I, I'm going to be a judge. Here come the judge. I already typed it in, Ben. He will be a pro. Ding, no. ding, ding. Oh, there it is. All right, who's next? Next we've got Jason White. I spelled it phonetically for you there. Yeah, that's you nice. can have this J is yours. Do you want me to sign it? You can have it. Oh, lovely. It's it's spelled K Korean phonetically. Yeah. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> and who is he going to be? And Jason White is going to be a con. Dun dun dun. Con! <laughs> yep. That leaves that, Eric that. <laughs> That leaves Eric, who will be a judge, I have doing what he does best, judging people. I have much more in this small Chrysler than great comfort at the most pleasant price. All right. So let me, let me rehash the rules here, right. Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> As a pro, I will do my best to convincingly talk up the positive aspects of the vehicles in each of our three rounds, no matter how awful they actually are, like the Smart 4-2. That was a terrible choice, Ben. On the other hand, Jason, as the con, it is your job to tear these cars apart. I get to be small and petty. Yes, you do. Oh, wow. This is going to be fun. Well, what is, sounds like you're good at it. So each of us will have one minute per car, or rather 45, 45 seconds, seconds, seconds per we've, car. We've adapted the rules. To state our cases. Following that, there will be a 15-second rebuttal round. As we mentioned, Christian and Eric are our judges for today. What up? Yep. And I hope both of you have a spare Word document open or, or a scrap piece of paper just to take notes on. I think that can this. be accomplished. Yes. So, Ben, shall we get started? You're sort of the ringleader of and this. By, by the way, uh, the Jason, I don't know if you need to refresh, but I've got all three picks in there. Oh. Just don't peek yet, but as I announce them, it may give you, you know, I've got some links in there, and you may get some ideas. Um, so I think we're going to say Pro has to go first on this one. We'll give Jason the advantage. Wait, going you're, second. You're pro, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I'm no. pro. Craig is pro, Craig so is he's pro. gonna so he's gonna go first, and so our first Let me cue it up vehicle here. is the 2012 Ford Transit Connect. Go when you hear the sound of my bell. Ford Let's Transit. Get it on. Um, I can I'm, I can I'm I stop pro. everything you're, you're one moment? My time. Hang, hang on, one moment. I, I, hang on. I, I yes, have to stop yes, the yes. proceedings. Okay, please. Given the fact that I work for the company that uh, this product is made by, oh please, I believe this may be a conflict of interest, and I might not want to be a con. I'm pretty sure no one's listening, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks unconvinced. <laughs> All right, here's what we're going to do then. Skip to the second one, We're going to skip to the second one. You. There's going to be a mystery third. That Someone sounds I hope, good. I hope that sounds you good. don't work for any other companies. Someone is being a total DB. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. <so> <laughs> <laughs> wow. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. I got <laughs> it's all coming out now, isn't it? <laughs> wow. I kid. I just. So I like just, I, as uh, I was saying, round one is the 2012 Mazda Mazda 5. <laughs> Mazda Mazda 5. Okay. <laughs> so there we go. When you hear the sound of my bell, you will have 45 seconds to go. And one ringy dingy. So 2012 Mazda 5. It is a compact minivan. Like the original Chrysler minivans that came out in, what, about 1984, I think? If you look at today's what are called minivans, they're gigantic. And this is really a, a return to the roots of the product. 
Um, dual sliding doors on this thing. Amazingly versatile. It's compact. It's fun to drive. It's a Mazda. You got a four-cylinder engine under the hood. You can even get a manual transmission in this thing. What could be more awesome? You've got room for the family. It's fun for dad to take out and you know carve up some corners on the weekends if he wants to or if he's on his commute. Fun to drive. And it's, it's, it's got a lot of room in it as well. Compact dimensions, but spacious. And I think this is a great vehicle for small, young families and driving enthusiasts alike. Right wow. on time. Whew. Jason, when you hear the sound of my bell, you're our con. Well, I know what I'm going to buy when I want everyone to know on the road that I'm beautifully and simply happy. Smiley. <laughs> Time mm -hmm. is zoom, 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 zoom. This is, uh, good grief. Where do I begin? The How's the design? The design is very excitable and very interesting and very, it may not be to, to everyone's liking. Uh, <laughs> it's it's not <laughs> good. <laughs> it, 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 it tends to communicate happiness in a way that may be a bit, I don't know, Joker-esque in the fonts, possibly. And maybe you're having a bad day and, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mark your bed. Scrap. Is that really what you meant to say? Yes. Scrap. <laughs> oh, Cover scrap. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so it's time for the rebuttal rounds. It is. All right. 15 seconds is Craig, it. At the sound of my bell, you will have 15 seconds, Craig. These are depressing times we live in. The economy's in the toilet. Has, it's been so for many years. And I think people want to feel a little bit of excitement when they go out to their vehicle and see this big, cheerful, smiling face that greets them in the garage every morning. I like the design, personally. Jason, at the sound of my bell, you will have a uh, an opportunity to rebut. So, rebut! Speaking as a Gen Xer, I find the fact that a lot of people can be abstractly happy uh, all the time a bit insulting. You know, if, 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 if times are bad, you should react to them in an appropriate fashion, not put on a happy face all the time and pretend every... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is going with the call of logic there. All right, we got to go to the judges now. Let's go to the judges' chambers. Judges. Now, without revealing your final picks, judges, what are your reactions to this first round? Let's start with Craig. Craig's not a judge. Craig's not a judge. Let's start with what you thought of Craig. Here come the judge. All right. Um, obviously, Craig is a fan of this car, even aside from his position. That's pretty clear. Um, and uh, made a good argument. Really uh, hit some good points there and sold it well and, and really put some feeling behind that uh, opinion. So good job. Made a good case. Eric, well, Craig, your Craig, thoughts? Craig was certainly uh, well prepared as if he had recently driven this vehicle and seemed to have a, 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 a breadth of knowledge on, on the vehicle and its driving dynamics. I'm beginning to think that the deck was stacked against Pasha, him. Pasha, Pasha, Eric. Not, not to influence the judge's um, decision, but Gorski C. writes in the chat, worst con ever. <laughs> <laughs> He's got two rounds to pick I it know, up, though. I yeah. know. All right, so let's go on to round two, then. Or 2B. Yes, well, we're going to be, because 1 was eliminated, we're on to 2B, right? So so I believe Jason gets to go first Jason this time. gets to go first this time. Because we flip them around for each round. So but am I supposed to pick on, th or click 3? No, this time? no. 2B. 2B. You might have to refresh again You'll need to get to it to show up. 2B. Oh, there it is. Or not 2. All right. Exactly. <laughs> so 2B is the 2011 Honda Odyssey. Ouch. At the sound of my bell. You Jason? don't work for them, do you? <laughs> no, I do not work for these people, no. Those people. <laughs> Those people. At the sound of my bell, you will have 45 seconds to be the best con you can be. Well, now we know what happens when the only clay tool in the studio is a, hack a, is a hatchet or a hacksaw or any, any number of other things. My Ouch. goodness. I, it's clear to me that what they would like you to see here is is the fact that the uh, sliding door doesn't line up with the rear quarter of the vehicle. What were they thinking? Urgh. Not only that, they've managed to shoot this car in the most unflattering pose possible with a telephoto lens that's 100 feet across the courtyard. It's, it's just ridiculous. I don't want to call attention to two things on a minivan, the fact that it has sliding doors and the fact that it has a track that's right outside. 
Why do you want to call attention to these two things? Why? It doesn't make any sense. It's ugly. End of story. Don't buy it. Look Perfect. at that. Right Perfect. on time. He's kicking ass and taking names, Ben. <clears throat> this like is going to be hard Biden. to re rebut. Yes, except <laughs> you're not shirtless washing a car in the studio here. <laughs> 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 Christian has an aversion to man boobs. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just ones that are eligible for a He wanted ARP to give the twin <laughs> cannons some sun. Okay. Craig, at the sound of my bell, pro away. Pro is, is, is pro a verb? <laughs> <laughs> that is very creative, Ben. You pro away right now. Go. All right. Honda Odyssey. Let's be honest. Many, people don't buy minivans for design. These are practical vehicles. They've got families. They've got a lot of stuff they need to schlep around. Minivans fit the bill. They're comfortable, safe economical even. And I'll be honest, the Honda Odyssey is not the prettiest one on the market, not by a long shot. <laughs> not at all. But <laughs> it's it's reliable, it's comfortable, it's quiet, it's efficient as I mentioned. This this is largely considered to be the benchmark minivan today. Um, it's got a strong track record. The previous generation was an excellent product as well. And you know, just to reiterate, people aren't looking for design in this segment. I don't believe. They want practicality. They want functionality. And this Honda Odyssey delivers. There you go. All right. It's time for our rebuttal round. Ooh. And at the sound Jason's, of my bell. Jason is boiling over right oh, now. I can see that kettle is. Oh. <laughs> at the sound of my bell, he's going to have 15 Watch seconds steam. to boil <laughs> over. So, boil. If Dave were here and wanted to comment on this Odyssey, he would say, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Oh, wait, not Dave. Hal. The ro yes, yes, Hal. Yes, well, you get the point. Yeah, sliding door, slot in the side. What more do you need to know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Craig. You, you may rebut at the sound of my bell. You said butt. Sliding doors are practical, make great access to the back seats, you know, easy to load car seats into, which is the target market of, stop making that face at me, of this demographic <laughs> that purchases miniature, miniature vans. End of story. Diminutive van. Vanlet. <laughs> diminutive. That's a good episode title, too. <laughs> the diminutive program. Make a note, make a note. The diminutive program. <laughs> All right, let's go to the judges' chambers. Judges, what'd you think? How'd we do in round two? Grab this one first. Well, certainly Craig uh, is not is, is a big fan of vehicles that are utilitarian, as we could see by based off his uh, two arguments off the Mazda Five and this, uh, and we can see Jason uh, views that uh, this car from a design standpoint is uh, is uh, one of Beelzebub's greatest. Christian, your thoughts? Um, well, obviously Jason came to the table with a little bit more uh, preparedness this time around, so that was cool, and uh, you know made some good points there, and obviously knew what he was looking, you know, to to make points on. But you know, Craig also had a strong argument, but I kind of felt like there was some contradiction between this argument and the one that we just heard from him about the other minivan. So, ooh, kinda, kinda uh oh, some, that hurt. Was uh, kind of got a little lost there. Precedent. Craig didn't do so well in this one. <laughs> What's the opposite of a power up? A, a, you know, level up. Level up. I think yeah. he just did. A level down. <laughs> Does that work for you? It works. Slide whistle. It works. All right. Well, I believe we have another round to get to. Our third and final round. Is this the tie break? What's it gonna be? What Could be. What's it gonna do? All right. This time Seven we seconds. start with Craig again. Oh jeez. So. Our third round is the 2012 <laughs> Chevrolet oh Express 1500. Craig, at the sound of my bell, I think you're going to know what to do by this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm high functioning. Anyway, Chevrolet Express. This is a vehicle for people that work for a living. Plumbers, carpenters, HVAC repairmen. This is a rough and tumble cargo hauler. You can throw your tools in there. You can drive this thing all day, run it hard, and put it away wet, and it's going to start up every day. This is like a stone or something. Never breaks down. It just It's there. It, utility. Like a rock? Like a rock. Thank you. <laughs> this is a... Like, 
what more can you say? This is a vehicle for working people. No consideration for design, which I'm sure my opponent is going to harp on. But this is I, – I don't know what else to say. It's for working folks. Blue-collar market. Enough. Viable. Enough. Cut his mic. Oh, that's me. Sorry. <laughs> it's Jason's turn. All right. What does Jason think about the Chevrolet Express 1500 at the sound of my bell? Do it. Once in a while, we are treated to truly epic events in history. 1969, mankind walks on the moon. 1971, mankind walks on the moon. Again. (laughs) Then for a long time, nothing happened. (laughs) Until today. We get to review the most wonderful van ever. This thing is absolutely just regurgitation. It's always the way it is with these B vans. This is basically a Band-Aid on top of a Band-Aid on top of a Band-Aid of, tr- of vans that were made in the 1960s. <laughs> Trust me, technologically, this van is about as Stone Age as you can get. And it just drives home the point for me. It, it really just says, this is a business that just, it, oh, shoot. I lost it. True. Well, I had a good few. Shcrap. Well, I think he won Shcrap. that round, folks. That could be a good title, Shcrap. too. Shcrap. Shcrap. <laughs> Shcrap. <laughs> Make a note. I did. Scrap right. diminutive vans and program. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Gorski C is not doing a shot every time we say program. Yeah. I, I just realized something. Out. All mm. three of these vehicles were vans. That's Could true. it be a theme? Mm. Theme. Four ben, if ben you count the Transit Connect. Hmm. Yeah. Plus it was easy because they were all on one page on Auto by Tell. So <laughs> <laughs> let's Rebuttals. go into Let's go into this rebuttal. Like, like big rebuts, and I cannot lie. All right. <laughs> you said but. <laughs> yes, I did. Craig gets a 15-second rebuttal round at the sound of my bell. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh! <laughs> Vehicles of this vintage, dating back to the 60s, they've, they're going to be reliable because they have got everything right. They've had it in production for so long, it's never going to fail on you. It's bulletproof. And that is what workmen need. Blue-collar folks that work for a living. End of argument. On time. Thank you. Jason, you know what to do. Oh, goodness, the tools are paid for. Look at how much money we've saved for the next 150 odd product cycles. <sighs> There's so much they could do with this, it'd be so much fun. But it'll never happen because the bills are paid. <laughs> As he turns. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that Johnny Cox? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's see. Judges? Judge away. Um, uh, you know, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that about says it what all. What can Thanks, one Christian. say? I, I mean, both of them had strong arguments. Craig sounded like he was campaigning with his blue-collar Joe Six-Pack. Joe the Plumber! Excited. Whatever. <laughs> Sarah Palin. Yes. You know, yeah, like his, his Palin gotcha arguments here. I don't know what is going Locking on, but I, I hear his point, but... Felt like I was gonna have to vote for him at the end, like for real, like to run something. Oh and damn it! Yeah. Damn it! I should have looked uh, in the chat, guys. I, Gorski C said go for the A team angle. He's brilliant. Why didn't I like, do that? And he didn't do his research apparently. Nope. Um. So, uh, Jason told a story. I got sucked in. It was good. Um. But, uh, you know, I don't know that much about this band because I don't really care about it either. So I I can't really uh say from that, but. Yeah, they both make good arguments. I think that uh, Jason is a little more cohesive. Eric, your thoughts? Um, sorry, I'm responding to three IMs at once, mm-hmm. uh, as well as listening to everyone's arguments. And I and I have to say, <laughs> I both, were, both were very passionate. Both brought uh, excellent viewpoints. Uh, this will be a tough decision to choose one here in the third round. It's keeping him close to his vest, folks. All right, so we've gone through all three rounds. Mm -hmm. Judges, let's go round by round now. Who won what? Who won? All right, let me just get in here. So round one. Pick number one we didn't do. Pick number one we're going to skip. I don't remember how that even got down there. So round one, or which would be round two in this case. (laughs) First vehicle was the 2011 Mazda 5. Mazda, Mazda 5. Mazda. Uh, I'm giving that one to Craig. Yeah. I would give that one to Craig. <laughs> <laughs> not even going to appeal to the judges. No, okay. I will not. Mm, right. I, I know when the, he's got when dignity. I, I know folks. when a cause is lost. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, 
Eric? Yes, Craig. Goes to Craig. Craig right. carried the day on round one. Fine. Level up. Fine. 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 That's, That's fine. fine. All right. Round two. 2012 round. Honda Odyssey, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I give that one to Jason. Ooh. And I, too, will give that one to Jason. Oh, <laughs> oh it's dear. heating up. All right. Round three was the 2011 – oh, 2012 – Chevrolet, like it matters. There was so much, there was so much <laughs> difference between the two. Chevy Express, 1500. <laughs> Christian? Giving it to Jason. Oh! 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 Major damage. That is. <laughs> oh! Good Lord. Did that hurt, Craig? Yes. You got a hole for your side. a bit hole in my side. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I could make that a 16-bit hole in your side. Oh! oh! Look at that. Eric, was, Eric is a closet space enthusiast, so your argument won him over, apparently. We'll see. Well done. Well done, well done. Had a rough start, but uh, finished, finished well, so uh, kind of give Slow me and steady that. wins the race. It's sneaky. So, it Craig. The job done. Craig, we mm-hmm. have to say to you, unfortunately, you are the loser. Again. Again. And Jason. Jason. Congratulations. Winner! Now we're all sad. (laughs) (laughs) I'm happy for hearing the jingle. I don't know what you... (laughs) So, that concludes the exciting installment of verses that we had planned for today. Ben, thank you for those wonderful picks that you found, apparently, in two seconds when you just went to that particular website, autobytel.com. But we appreciate your effort, however small it was. Yes, (laughs) as always. I'm tipping the hat I am not wearing to you for being the victor in this. Thank you. Round of verses, I am vanquished. I would Christian, are you sword. trying to call in an airstrike there or something? Yes. <laughs> He's playing WoW. That's true. <laughs> That's what's happening. All right. But with that, I do believe we have a show in the can. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think we're mm-hmm. we can wrap Emphasis things up? Emphasis on can. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. So, Eric Tritko. The scrapper. <laughs> scrapper. <laughs> scrapper. Eric Tritko, RumbleStrip.net, RumbleStrip on Twitter. Yes, sir. I'm Max Webb. What are you doing? What's going on? We haven't heard from you in quite a spell, the way the schedule worked out, apparently. Yes, exactly. Well, I've been trying to cram 70 hours worth of work into the past four days because of the holiday. Um, so busy at that, I have have been officially made the director of social media at IMAX Web. Wow, uh, good job. And Which yeah. is why I, you haven't seen much on rumblestrip.net because I have about seven reviews stacked up to try and finish, but I literally have zero time to do it. So, uh, hopefully... Minutia, we'll have... Minutia. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. 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 Literal web. Yes, I have literal web, no time. Literal. So... But we should be saying I should be putting I've got three that are three quarter of the way done, so we should you should see some of those um hopefully next week. Very good. Christian uh Conover. <laughs> Check your notes. Yes. Yeah, yes, Conover. Craig Cole. Yes. You are you are from the wheel spin that TV network. Are we, are we gonna have a uh, are we gonna have a family guy moment here where I correct you and you correct yeah. me back? <laughs> cool it's whip. Wheel spin, Ooh, Craig. Whip. <laughs> cool whip. The Wheels of Steel Network? Say wheel. Wheel. Anyway. Wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Pop yes, culture is fun. Network. Wheelspin.tv. Um, we're putting up some a lot of the stuff that we got from the Baltimore Grand Prix this past weekend, which unfortunately due to uh, contractual mm. restrictions, we didn't get to shoot much race footage, but uh, got other stuff going on over there. So... Um, <laughs> We'll be posting that up over the course of the next couple of days. Very nice. And, uh, of course, our fine BMW program that we do. Mm. And uh, you can also find this fine program posted there as well. We thank you for doing that. We do appreciate it. Ow, mm. ow. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, wheelspin.tv, wheelspin TV on Twitter, all those good places. Wheelspin Network. Thank you, Christian. Always a pleasure. Last but not least, our guest this evening, Jason White. White. <laughs> Author, educator, <laughs> artist. Yes. You wear many hats, many feathers in that cap. Yes. I forgot voiceover artist. Oh, and voiceover artist. How could I forget that? Yes. Jimmy Stewart and Bert. I mean, the list goes no, no, on no, and no, on it, and it, on. It, Richard and, uh, is the Jimmy Stewart okay. specialist. Okay. I, I I'll tell him you said once. that. He yes. would appreciate it. Yes. No one can replace his Jimmy Stewart. Um, he would appreciate those kind words. I'm in a bit of a transitional period right now. I, I just started teaching a class at CCS uh, on Monday and Wednesday nights. 
College for Creative Studies. Yes, and and that's taking up most of my efforts outside of my day job. So I am shelving old school Viscom two for the time being, and I'll come back to that to some later date. Does this mean we have to now refer to you as Professor Jason White? No, I'm not a professor. I'm an adjunct. So that's, adjunct Jason yeah, White. Adjunct Jason White. <laughs> But uh, I do periodically upload uh, new tutorials on the Old School Viscom Facebook page, and you'll find uh, a monochromatic ink drawing on vellum and also a tutorial that shows the importance of line weight. You're drawing the Soyuz capsule, I believe. No, it is the oh. Apollo. Wh- whatever. Program. I got the generic brand. I, I it's ran the down, Zune of space capsule. I, I just ran right? down the program, <laughs> program <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Dorsky C., is almost to the bottom of that fifth. <laughs> He's almost to the bottom, I think. So, so you, you can check uh, the Facebook page periodically for Old School Viscom to see our tutorials that we're doing for web-based uh, content. And the book is still for sale. Ten Which ca- would be? Old School Viscom. You can find it at oldschoolviscom.com. Dot com. Dot com. Uh, well, I was going to say net, but I just com. narrowed yeah. it. Yes. I'm delivering ten copies of the book to the CCS Bookstore tomorrow. Air mm, high five. Mm, mm. There you go. <laughs> Great. All right. All right. Jason White, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. I enjoyed being on the program. Well, I'm glad you could make it for the program. We, we appreciate and we, what the, the program. program it was. The, the program, program needs program. expertise like that. Taste. Knowledge. It's what makes passion. it such a fine program. Exa- yes. These are not run-of-the-mill things you can scrape up from a street corner. Order now. <laughs> Round, you don't even the have to order. Friday program. For Sorry. Sorry, no CODs. Canadian residents, please add fifteen dollars. Because your money's not worth anything. No, that's don't a miss lot your of chance. And you, and you must pass the math test. Canada, D- don't miss your chance to win one hundred dollars by listening to Roundabout on your smartphone using Stitcher. Just go to Stitcher.com/roundabout. Then, when you register your Stitcher account, don't forget to enter the promo code Roundabout. One of our lucky listeners will win one hundred dollars each month just for using Stitcher. So check that out, definitely. One hundred dollars. And don't forget to check out the rest of the AutoLine family of fine programs, including AutoLine This Week, AutoLine After Hours, and of course, AutoLine Daily. And if you have a question for us, please get in touch. We have a Google Voice number on our Roab hotline. It's one five five nine Roab. 411 in numerical numbers. That is 1559-762-2411. Give Craig? us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Yes, Eric? Is that as can, I find the op- can, I, can I find the open line program on the, the auto line fine family programs? As well? Program! Yes, you can. Open line is a part of the gaggle of programs. That's true. And we just finished an open line. Mm-hmm. And, uh, with actually, the former I, CIA director. With the former director of the CIA. That's a downloadable program. That's a woolly nowadays. subject, he wasn't was, it? <laughs> He was quite an interesting character. Actually, a very good interview. And uh, that, good po- here, that podcast isn't up yet, but watch for it shortly. Although, if you go to the John's Journal page on autoline.tv, you will find the recorded video immediately available for your consumption. Enjoy. Yeah. And also, there's another way to get in touch with us. If email is just too complicated, you know, Dialing on the phone is risky. You can get a virus or something. Smoke you signals, can, carrier pigeons. Exa- you can always get in touch with us via snail mail, as Mr. Rob, Mr. Stuart Ritenian did. He sent us a lovely postcard he picked up. I believe he said in the northern of the Carolinas. Um, what's it called? North yes, Carolina. Yes, North, Car- North Carolina. Yes, thank you. Um, so he sent us a lovely postcard. One more payment, and it's mine. Shows a rusted out, dilapidated truck. So car themed. Nice warm wishes on the back, <laughs> wishing us luck and much success for the Chinese New Year. So, Rich, we thank you for that, and you too can ship us something in the mail, as Mirko did a week or two ago. Mirko Reinhardt, from our good German friend, That's true. sent us a. I got something that I'm going to send you. Oh, dear. Via snail mail. I can't wait. 39201 Schoolcraft Road, Suite B12. Make sure you Livonia, send it before Michigan. the month is out, though. Yeah, because we're we are moving. moving. B12 quickly. sounds like a multivitamin. <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> Centrum complete. 4 a one energizes zero. your automotive spirit. You've got a lot of living to do. <laughs> 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 you sure? <laughs> or something? Anyway, follow us on Twitter, <laughs> twitter.com slash roundaboutshow. We're also on the Facebook, facebook.com slash mm-hmm. roundaboutshow. And if you never want to miss an action-packed episode, you can subscribe to this <laughs> podcast for automatic delivery. 
Just check us out in iTunes or on the Zoom Marketplace. Anyway, with that, thanks to all of you out there listening. Please join us again next week as we circle the roundabout. We'll talk to you then. Okie dokie. Speaking of uh, incontinence, I have to pee. <laughs> Jason was vibrating for the last half hour. <laughs> He's going to go tend to oh, some personal oh needs God. at the moment. But Special. that's a good show, folks. Good show. It's a fine program. It is an ex- it's, not, it's more than fine. It's superb. Dandy. It's aged to perfection. Superior. Barrel aged in new French oak. Hey, at, at one point, were we down to doing shows in about an hour? Yeah, there I don't know how time. That Actually, versus takes forever. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious. I mean, not that it's an issue. We I were just... at one time, yes. And that's why I reduced the number of stories from 12 to 8, although Jason did an extra one, so it was 9. But it was short to be. But it was short. We're not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, you know, I think the yeah. issue is we discuss stuff after all the stories, mm-hmm. and for a while we weren't discussing anything. Yeah. Maybe if we can try to keep it shorter next time. Yes, How long was it? I actually hour. hit reset accidentally. Oh, oh. Craig. I it was about know. an hour and a half. Yeah, that's not too bad. Anyway, we got to thank our chatters before we sign off, of course. We, this show Always. would not be... This show, would, this show would not have the depth of color. Well, you know what? Before we before we thank without chatters. Before we thank said chatters, mm. I went in the chat room earlier mm. and I said, "Hey guys, we're gonna be asking your opinions on what the title should be." Of course. So ideas. Title time. Chat room. Right. You you've heard some of ours. Uh, let, let me just what run down the three that I thought right, of again. We'll and if any up. of you guys of our panel have any, you can jump in right after me. I thought of scrap, scrap, mm-hmm. diminutive vans. Or the program episode. Those I'm are my three. program. Nothing. It could be the scrap program episode. The Gorski C says the program program. The program program. Rumble strip says shrap. The bestest program ever. The Dominion E-V-er. Dane program. E-V-er. We didn't talk about electrics, Michelle. <laughs> Curious. Look at me. Look at never mind. <laughs> <laughs> look at me. Look at me. I'm on the program. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen awesome. Ewing says a program about Salvage. Salvage. <laughs> yes, Salvage. Well, apparently, um, Jason had a champagne. <laughs> Still live. Still live. Don't, oh, don't go into the description of what a champagne is. Nope. That's, this is a family program. The programmator. <laughs> the programmator. The champagne, you know. Supernova in the sky. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Oasis. Hello, Oasis. Oh, Can we yeah. divide that plan. Oasis is the best <laughs> British band <laughs> since the, the Beatles? Salvage program. Miss <laughs> Motormouth says the Bona Boutique <laughs> Salvage program. <laughs> right, your crown, Congressman. Mm, these are good titles. Any ideas for titles, Jason, for the program this week? This, this, wait. The episode title. Oh, uh, remind Ben to record program. Shoot! <laughs> what did I? What did I do, guys? You're oh, supposed to remind me. Don't remind me. Enzo one six six mm suggests. <laughs> he says okay. the two sliding doors and a ruling box of crap program. I think he meant rolling. But the, oh, well, the running a reference to the ruling. ground program. <laughs> <laughs> the what? Say again. The, the running a reference into the ground program. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Mm. Good point. That's a good the point. Old, we're, 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 see, the old bit program. We're, we're the equivalent of David Letterman going, but a few go, but a few go, but a few go. <laughs> the 8 bit hole in the side of Craig program. Oh, that's oh. pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Derek Winter. That's it. Ding, ding, ding. The program to end all programs, says Willie D. Willie D. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, program. you'll just have to check out the podcast on, on Monday it. to see what we came, what we decided it's on. It's a secret. Program to end all programs. All right. If you can't take you the heat, stay out of, of the program. <laughs> well, let me. Okay, hold on. Uh, and oh, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> Good. Thank you. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. Enzo's 160 sem, 66 mm suggests uh, the 8 bit one. The 8 bit hole in the side of crack program. <laughs> Episode. Yeah. Not program. It's not gonna. This could be the first ever program. roundabout listed program. as a, a program rather Are we than. Switch to program instead of episode. No, maybe just for this one. No, just program this one. program number ninety eight, ninety six, ninety six. Coming up on the BBC. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. But that wasn't in the show. It not really, sure. we never it really that wasn't. The show. That was the pre-show. We had Jeff, Jeff <laughs> Gilbert and scrap. Still. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh scrap. <laughs> scrap. Scrap. <clears throat> All right. 
Any last ditch suggestions, folks, from the chat room before we sever this? I'm waiting. Speaking of Jeff Stop. Gilbert, he just signed on to Skype. Well, let's get him in here. <laughs> get him on on the line. If for anyone some has reason. any suggestions of where we can put a microphone, or no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. Well, let me run down the chatter list. We yes. got to thank them, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Do you? We never do that. Maybe that's our problem. <laughs> do you have chatters, Christian? Y- yes. We, we could do. loan you some of talk. ours. I, that's fine. <laughs> we have a chatter loan out <laughs> program. I'll, I'll be it's sure like, to return them. Don't we got worry. a box Check, full of them. Checking out a book at <laughs> the chatter library. Box, as it were. A chatter box. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was said. We've got Bro Five B. Isn't it usually Bro Five A? He's the twin of Bro Five A. So he's like he's the, the, the Bob twin. Hall to the Jim Hall. Then this is roundabout. <laughs> yes, that. Oh I think Bro Five A got so drunk on the program drinking game that he misplaced the drinking the game. game program. Anyway, we've got Christian Conover. Thank you, Christian Ben Sanders, of course. Cran breaking Luke. In the chat room, loyal fan from the beginning, from the dark days. Luke Farlow, right? Mm-hmm. Luke, I'm going to be sending you a pad of vellum. I haven't forgotten. Mm. Just so you know. I just <laughs> he he got... replies, moist. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's probably best if it's not moist, but I appreciate the thought. <laughs> I wonder if he's purchased his copy of Old School uh-huh. Viscom or two, one for the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Jewing is now moist. Yes, he is. So. Oh, dear. Rabbi so Jewing. Is Old, old I did School Viscom available I, on the Kindle platform yet? Uh, no. I, I, he, no, uh, we don't uh, go ev- there. Eventually, I might take it to there, but... It needs yeah, to be an e-book or else I won't you know what? It. You know what Jason thinks of Kindle? What? <laughs> God. That, now, that is moist. Let's be That's honest. Moist. That's moist. I like, I like my Kindle. I have a nook and I love it. Mm. I didn't read books before. Now That's I like the books. zoom of the e readers, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, where'd we leave off? We left and off at Gorski C, loyal fan, also from just about the beginning, if I recall. I don't know how he found us or we found him, but it was a match made in heaven because he is here every week. He is a trooper. You know, he's yep. one of those stalwarts. Stephen J. Ewing is trying to whore himself out, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Motormouth is also in the chat. Michelle Naranjo, she wasn't on the. <laughs> That's Michelle's spade cougar noise. Okay. <laughs> it also <laughs> doubles as a door opening. I thought I thought we were gonna get like a Tammy Faye uh, noise to to use for with Michelle. Well, we do have. Uh, you go ahead, Craig, and I'll, right. I'll show show Jason. So Miss Motormouth, Craig. she's not on the show, but she's in the chat room. That is dedication she's right there. Ever dedication. present. Mm-hmm. Of course, roundabout. Michelle has six. a lot of friends. Well, I was nervous about calling strangers, but. Well, these strangers, they quickly became my friends. <laughs> the cath chat. I was so sick of boiling and drying and reusing old catheters. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Play it again. I was devastated. <laughs> I had to reuse catheters for the rest of my life. Oh, I thought it, I thought you said cat litters. <laughs> it, it, it's catheters. Okay. Oh, she, she actually takes a litter of newborn kittens, stitches them together, and uses it as a towel to dry off for the rest of her life. That is devastating. And this <laughs> devastating. So, Miss Motormouth, always a pleasure. Yeah. Roundabout six nine four. Not sure who that is. Mystery. Thank you for joining us. Rumble strip in the chat, of course. The Scott in Cleveland. The he was Scott. the Scott in Cleveland, and he's then he's back, back to just to Scott. Scott in Cleveland. He's a Scott in Cleveland now. <laughs> One of many. Stephen Ewing made it for the chat. Just can't get enough of that roundabout. Mm-mm. And our and a new new what fellow, Willie D. We've the never Rabbi had Willie really before, I don't think. I don't think so. He's a newbie in the, in the chat room, but he is certainly welcome back. All right, so. Willie D. Thanks thank for you. joining thank us. You. Thank you, everyone. And if I've somehow missed your name, thank you, too. They've all done very well. We need to get that sound drop, Ben. Oh, what? from you've all done very well. Thank you, Mr. Grace. You know what? Uh, someone knows what I'm referencing. Oh my God! Well, I used to watch that show all the time. I own it on DVD. I, I have, I have the John Inman LP. Are you being served, sir? I'm Humphreys. Mr. I'm free, <laughs> Mr. Humphreys. Are you free? I'm free. No, I'm busy at the moment, Mr. No, Captain like... Peacock. Where well, this gentleman wants a dress. I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> 
So there we go. <laughs> I believe that makes a roundabout <laughs> program. Well, my pussy was a... Yeah, yeah. Uh, my... This is Slocum. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Mr. Granger was my favorite, though. It was though. so cold this morning. My pussy was frozen solid. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Granger was my favorite, and they replaced him three or four times once he passed away after, like, the fourth or glass fifth Glass of season. water for Mr. Granger. <laughs> I don't need a glass of water. <laughs> And there's the one, the one episode he, he took over for Mr. Rumbold, the boss guy. Yeah. And he was just a tyrant. Yeah, he was mean. And then <laughs> there, there was the funny guy, uh, Mr. Um, what was what was the, the, the maintenance Rabbi guy? Mr. Amon. Mr. Amon. Played by Jonathan uh, English was the guy's last name. Manusha. Arthur, Manusha. Arthur English. He, was, he, he, had to, he was never allowed out on the floor of mm-hmm. the, the department store during business hours. Mm-hmm. And Mr. Captain Peacock, the floor walker, the kind of boss of the area, would always yell at him, Miss! <laughs> I'll yeah. tell you what I'll do. Yeah, and he'd have this I'll, Cockney accent. But I'll, I'll invent a levitating device yes. that can send the, send the goods across the floor untouched by human ants. <laughs> so, so poor, poor Mr. Armin would never be allowed on the floor. But Mr. Granger requested the executive drinks trolley. So yeah, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to let Eric and Christian go enjoy their Friday evening. Hey, that's not that's What a plan. thought. I just remembered that I have to go to the sexuality show next. Oh. Uh-huh. Are you serious? Are you you're debating? Or? No, no. I, I really do want to go and see this. Uh, that, that, and and, and it's, we finished in such a timely fashion that... Uh, we had such a good show until now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. I kid. I just... No, I, was just, I was telling. I, I, I'm going to see a, a display of erotic art in uh, Hazel Park. It's called The Sexuality Show. I'm guessing it has something to do with pee-pee parts. Well, then perhaps you'd be interested in the house that Michelle found with all the leather straps and whatnot. Uh, there's going to be a bondage theme tonight, too, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Good. You don't know the words? What do you do? Ground floor perfumery, stationery and leather goods, oh, wigs goodness. and haberdashery, <laughs> kitchenware and food going up. Do, 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 do. Craig... I'm embarrassed Eric for and Christian, you. at any time, you can leave. Yeah. Hey, and uh, Jason, if you're actually serious about feeling like doing some pro bono voiceover stuff, I'll shoot you an email. You come up with the copy, and I will give you the uh, VO. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Willie D, I'm a oh, big it, fan can, of can I, can I try my Can I try my uh, Robert Vaughn for you, just real quickly? Oh. Do it. There's a lot of talk about victims' rights. If you're a victim of an accident, you don't need talk. You need to take back <laughs> what's been taken away from you. <laughs> Tell the insurance company you mean business. <laughs> can, okay, can you do Christopher Bargebedian? Look who Eric I'm found. attorney Christopher Bargebedian. <laughs> 180 fight. <laughs> I'll fight for you. Local commercials are so Local terrible. commercials are the best. And then there's that one lawyer where the guidance on the porch going, he is good. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that one? That one's I great. Have. Well, the one that gets me is, they're, they're, it's not a commercial, but it's a billboard you see on the highway. It says 1-800-CALL, and then a picture of Sam Bernstein, Sam Bernstein. Detroit <laughs> area lawyer, which if you didn't know who he was, how is that going to help you? Uh, well, we all know who he is. But what if you're an immigrant to the city? Not that anyone moves to Detroit. 1-800-this guy's face. Yeah, exactly. See, <laughs> I tried yeah. dialing his face, but it wouldn't go through. 1-800-AMBULANCE-CHASER. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was too many digits. Too many digits. Uh, <laughs> you, forgot, you forgot the ultimate local... Uh, he should who, seriously just get the phone number. Oh, there's, there's, also, there's also Lee Steinberg, this who has this place. guy. He is this guy doing the voice, the thing at the end. Choose the right attorney. <laughs> That's right. Just call, call me. me. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, That's Eric's right. turned into a dog. So. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Um, Choose the right attorney. Just call me. me. That's a sound drop there. <laughs> We've been recording. Bull Pucky. <laughs> ben, way to go. Well, it's on Ustream. You'll have, yeah. to, you'll have that, to sift The best the part, too, is Sorry also not. the people that I'm get on there. recording, Ben. Oh, good. Send that I, to me. I was injured in an auto accident. The insurance company was only giving me the run around. I had <laughs> run questions. Run around. <laughs> around. About. Those, like, I had weird. questions and needed answers. I needed someone who only ha- handled injury <laughs> cases. I called Sam. You sound like a NOAA weather radio. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me. Just call me. <laughs> it's a very jazzy voice. Yeah. Really deep. I didn't we really have all the time. Just call me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Christian has left the building. Good. Yeah, I'm, no. I'm, I'm one foot out the door. So, um. <laughs> Christian, thanks as always. Yeah, thanks, yep. I guess. I'll, uh, ben, I'll send you the, the audio, and Jason will shoot you an email. By the way, it misspelled your leave. name a bunch of times in the thing. You might want to look at that. So. What's the where? What? <laughs> it says two A's. Oh, is that... That's this proper. Is, that's Jordan C right says that actually sounded no, no, like a hostage send, video. Send, seriously, Christian, send me an email. I, I, I have a microphone set up at home. I'll have yeah. to get your email address then. Oh, uh, it's... Uh, well, you don't have to say it right now because I think we're still alive. Privacy issues. Oh, I can see I'll, I'll get Ben to send it to me. Ben? Yep. Just call it. <laughs> cool. We're and, done. Uh, Good Goodbye. Yes. Thank you for Good your night, time, everybody. folks. Good job. Good hustle, team. So, as always... Thank you, chat room. We'll see you next week. Program.